I find inspiration, I find rapture, I find awe to be the ultimate antidote to existential malaise. Oh wait, are we, did we start? So on my website, I've chosen to describe myself as a futurist filmmaker and epiphany addict. Um, I decided that it was actually a good use of the word addict. I need to be inspired. Because if I'm not inspired, I'm way too aware of the big picture. And uh, I think thinkers like Woody Allen would agree because all of his films are informed by his terror of the meaninglessness of existence if we don't paint the meaning upon it. And so in being a, a wonder junkie or an epiphany addict, um, what I'm longing for at all times is the experience of succumbing to some ecstatic communion with a feeling that is divine. I live for those moments. I need them. I love them. Let's talk about existential malaise, okay? Let's talk about the opposite of being epiphanized. Existential malaise, I think, is what happens when you dwell upon the fact that you are mortal. Ernest Becker, who won the Pulitzer Prize in 1973 for his book, The Denial of Death, and uh, I touch upon this a lot because it's such a defining work to the way I see things in the world. Here's a pop culture trivia. It's the book that Woody Allen gives Annie Hall in the movie Annie Hall when they're in the bookstore and he's like, you need to understand how I see life. So anyway, the denial of death proposes that the human condition, the source of all of our neuroses, is not defined by our sexual repression, as Freud would have told us, but it's actually defined by our anxiety about being mortal. The fear of death, the, the awareness that we can see ourselves over time and can foresee our own death in the future causes a tremendous amount of, of stress on our psyche. It's maddening, basically. And the only answer to that is, you know, to live a lie. 